Okay, we're just going to be going over the games for top seven. Um, I'm just going to go over the good ones. We'll start here since I did record it live, but because of the phone storage, I didn't really record, right? So we're going to go over the games. Um, you'll see we were playing pretty well. It was that 3 a.m. ability, you know. So we start off with the minor predicts, of course. You always might as well go for a nice swaggy predict. It's only cost five. And it's a really tough matchup against the E-Giant here. But we can go for an MK on it. I'll do double speed till double. And then slow it down, because I feel like in single it's too slow otherwise. Let's go for the pressure. Force on the cannon, and then the MK gets a jump off. And a few hits. So he does take King Activation. So 2,000 damage, a decent start, and then we can apply some dual lane pressure. And there you see, caught him low on the elixir on the right, so we got a lot of damage. Keep applying the pressure, force him to defend, we can go for minor bats. Doesn't matter if bats get there, we're getting the 500 minor damage, and we're in a pretty decent spot. So, we'll go for a bandit here. And we can, yeah, you can always MK same lane. As a golden knight, we go for queen because either he lightnings or nados, in which case we have the spear goblins. So he uses his nado here on the bats, and then we take tower. There's no way he can possibly defend that. And so at this point, we definitely can't defend that. There's no way. So we predict the giant on the bridge, and we just go all in. Stay all the cards, try and get at least some damage. And he goes for his nado, so we get one wall break of connection. So we're in a pretty good spot at this point. We can just queen low and we just need to get that much damage. So we'll see what he does. Let's see, we can MK opposite since like at this point, right, if he's going for a queen, going for a big push to the left lane, we just have to take out the X and it's fine. So we go for minor plus bandit. And then we're just trying to take out the Axe as soon as possible. We'll go for Zap as well. Because that Ejon's going to die to the towers. Then we're free to bats on the Golden Knight. And then we can go in as well. So we go in the middle, force out the NATO. We're just trying to get connections. So we go for some Mind Chip. Get a Zap. And then that Bandit getting, yeah, the final hits. So a really, really nice first game. Very clean. Yeah, it's a shame that audio didn't record, like, live, because we were playing smart, but that's okay. Anyway, next game against Newbie, and yes, he really was um, one of the worst players I've seen in a while. Managed to lose a very easy matchup, he's also really toxic, so, yeah, just an all-round clown. So he starts off with a bomb, and we go for Bandit, so he goes for the boost Phoenix. And now we see why he's anywhere near the top. Force out the arrows there, so that's fine. We're just working out what the deck is. That's also sort of thing, right? If you don't know the opponent's deck, like, I don't know, it's arrow zap. You can sort of work it out. Just play play a few bait things. And since he's an absolute genius, I'm sure he's going to go for Golem here. Oh, wow, wow. I wish I was as good as him. Golem in the first minute, because his brain is big. And so, yeah, without arrows, we know we can freely go down in the middle. Um, we've got some decent damage on the left. So the MK there, we could have gone for Zap, but since one of them would have got targeted by a tower, and I know that he has evolves opposite, I didn't really want to waste the two elixirs and stuff if they needed it. So we'll see what he does. He goes for... E-bombs, okay, so I'm just gonna die. Hmm. And you're in a pretty good spot. Since... I know, it just feels like we're kind of controlling it. We're playing him left, right, left, right. Never letting him get a massive push in here. Good use of the queen. Plus the minor. So he has to go for night, which... Important to note, right? It replays are still level 11 and a bit mucked up. But, yeah, it was ladder. So anyways, 
force out Ebards. So that's very nice. He's making big commitments. So we can go for Warbreak, so the lane if we want. We can go for Bat's High, force out a Zap. We know he wants to Zap. Then Warbreak is opposite, force out Bomber. And we can go for MK. And I mean, that's pretty safe. He's got no e -bombs. He has to defend it with a lot. We're in a pretty good spot to play the MK, I think. And um, we want to force out arrows. That's probably a miss on my end, not gonna lie. I might have miscalculated if he had arrows or not. I don't play with a second advice because I think it's stupid. Like, just play the game and stop being a moron. So we, we got a slip through the cracks, you know. If there were some cracks, it slipped through in a beautiful gob gang. Off that wall breaker slipped through, like that really low gob gang taking on the Phoenix. Just one EVA up hit, that's really, really nice. And so we're playing this mine into the bomber. Because if we take that out, then we still get minor hits. You don't have to worry about defending it. And we're still getting damage with the spear goblins. So he gets his push, and it's the push he wanted. So we go opposite, force him to defend that. He has to defend that, he has no option. Then we go for our MK. I think we zap something. We zap some bats. And that's fine. Again, pressure. Cycled to another bass, so he has to defend that. There's no way he can get a massive push. That's also dead. I think it's showing things that didn't happen in this replay because it didn't do that much damage and I ended up winning. But yeah, the replay is kind of just showing things that didn't occur. Um, but this occurred, yeah. So then we got the bandit through. And I think the replay just shows that it does more damage than it actually did. But as you see, a nice win. He was being toxic, so he had to return the favor. I know, replays are still glitched, but you got the idea. We played well the whole game. Then he did just not enough damage, and we got that good bandit. And so, Archie... Hmm, I'll put this one in single, because it was kind of action-packed. It was quite intense. So I didn't know the deck. So when I see Golden Knight, I just don't like it. Just an e, e, e giant, maybe golem, but definitely e giant. So we go for a high queen, it did more damage than I expect on the queen. But since the queen's there, we can pop the ability, force out zap. Yeah, that's nice. And a bit of mind chip. So we're trying to play it slow here, and by slow, I mean just like a little bit of stuff at the bridge until we can fully figure out the deck. So we know we want to MK there, so we can go, but we go for Bats, and then we go for Gob Gang in the middle, since that's going to pull the Phoenix as well. We didn't know we had another Witch, so that's kind of unfortunate. Bit of an awkward MK. I'm actually not sure if it could have been better placed, because like the, everything was moving, and with the radius it would have been, it would have been close. Might have been able to play that better. Just a micro thing. But, so now that we've figured out his deck, we're down a bit, so that's okay. But, let's see what he goes for. Okay, he has fireball, so he goes for his fireball. And then, at least, like, we found that out, we deduced it. And then he can just go for his golden knight, that's fine. And he has pop the ability as well. And so we're pretty safe to just queen up, since he won't have enough for e-barbs. Let's go for the Queen of Birthday. I think he gets a Golden Knight charge off. Yeah. But that's fine. It's going pretty well. Could be worse. So we're trying to get another Queen of Birthday. And we're just going to go for an MK at the back. We can afford to do that because with Wall Breakers, we can kite stuff opposite lane if we need to. Or that was a smart play with the Golden Knight, actually. So we just go for a Bandit to defend. It does end up dying. I didn't realize it would. That's okay, we have Wall Breakers opposite lane to pull the Golden Knight. And um, we end up getting one connection, so that's pretty nice. Goes for his E-Barbs, so we can afford to Queen pretty high on the Phoenix as well. And then it's kind of awkward here, but we go for minus Zap since we can't let that connect and we haven't got enough HP. And he goes for Mellow Witch opposite lane quite aggressively, but we can just ban it and take a bit of damage and that's fine. So low HP both towers, but we're definitely not out of it. And then now, it's quite key. We start pressuring those wall breakers on the left. Just mix stuff up, change the tempo. And then we go for a queen. High queen plus ability, taking out all this stuff. 
because now we have an opportunity yeah here this is the big mistake we mk and it goes from mother witch so yeah letting us minor on that mother witch just freely plus queen on tower we made a mistake with the blood brow so we get a load of damage way more than we expect and all of a sudden we're back in the game so we go for wall breakers and i think one of them actually connects so it was lucky but yeah i'm with that and he tries to predict, he kind of does predict, but we have MK in hand, so the Mother Witch is redundant as it were. And at this point, Golden Knight's not getting near the tower, that's going to jump. And we have a massive push, we go for Queen opposite bridge. We go for Band on the left, because we know he's going to E-Bub somewhere, and we can use Queen ability. And then we go for Minor Chip, because we have a massive push and he's going to struggle to defend. Go for Wall Breakers as well, since he might not have the elixir. He manages to defend, but at this point we're in chip range. And we know he, no chance he predicts this. No one ever gets the fourth position. And so we get it into where we need and we can just cycle to zap. So a really, really smart game. Like you saw, we were pretty patient. We weren't able to do much for basically the whole game. But we got there in the end. We had one good opportunity and we took it. And yeah. Just like a few big thousand damage pushes, finish them off. And this game, again, it was just play smart, not hard. Shoot, let's put it to single until we three count him. Like, that was the weirdest ability I've ever seen. Plus a freeze, plus phoenix. He just spent eight defending like wall breakers, it was just really weird. And so we can go for the MK here. That's the thing, I always like to MK the bridge because it's almost always a better play. But there, we're basically just capitalizing on the elixir we had by playing an MK. And then we're just going for Queen to take out the egg plus Monk. And the fact to push it opposite lane actually works out perfectly fine. Because we can pressure opposite lane plus ability. Um, yeah, even if a heal spirit, we're going to get some damage plus the MK as well. So a really, really good start. We just defended the poorly. And I was considering activating King here. But I just thought I'd rather attack. I don't want to spend three activating King when it probably won't make a difference. So we know he's going to NATO. Then again, we can pressure the ball breakers. Since he doesn't have Bar Baron, he has Heal Spirit instead. Like he doesn't have good counter, so it's having to freeze really awkwardly. He hasn't got much for the Gob Gang. So he goes for Phoenix, but takes a lot of damage. It's quite a bad Phoenix. Because he let everything lock onto the tower rather than the Phoenix itself. So we're looking really good, but Loon Freeze, one, one mistake and you die. But the usage of the Queen is also important, right? Because it will dominate any push that comes into it. But when we don't have Queen, we can't really defend. So we've got Mine at the back, because we know that he, yeah, he's going to pop the ability, so that's going to stay stationary, and the Mine is going to get pretty much the damage we need. And so we pressure opposite, because he's going to go for a big daddy push here, right? So, yeah, he's going for this big push. And this was one well, probably the luckiest interaction I've seen in a while. We get the good MK on the side, and the thing put, Monk pushes it out of freeze radius so that it can keep attacking and splashing. And we just whip that Queen ability, pretty good timing. And that, that's a joke. What a clean defense. And yeah, we actually predict the Lumber Loon. And he goes for that, but we know it won't take tower, we still have three spear goblins. We just take his tower, you can freeze, we don't really care, because we're going to win anyway. And yeah, complete and utter domination, to be honest. Really, really smart playing. Uh, I think we do have three crowning. It's like sometimes you do have to use a brain. Or at least just use queen well and let it be OP. Because queen is very good. And um, yeah, we just keep winning. We actually played very well in that loss, but I'll skip it anyway since it's gonna be quite a long video. And this this was a joke. I won nine trophies for this. Nine. I I didn't know that's possible. He was three hundred below me or something. Luckily he was awful, so it was just like obliteration, he just made a lot of errors. Maybe it was Wi-Fi alive or something, but Got a bit scammed. So anyway, 
what, like I said, I think in the last video of the deck, he's playing probably just the best deck in the game. He's abusing pretty much all the best cards. And so here, this miner is really, really bad. You can give him so much MK value. And then we know he's going to pop the ability, probably. Let's see, yeah. I think it's kind of a waste of one, because he might struggle to defend this. Especially since that ice bird, it's kind of hard to hit all the bats. So we go for this, we go for the miner as well. And then we go for a bandit. And yeah, forcing the defensive miner, if you can see he's on the back foot. We're still getting a bandit charge, plus a hit, and we're up a load of damage already. See what he goes for, he does monk. Again, Phoenix is so good, it boosted my queen. Look at that. That's an absolute joke. Because it pushed it up the lane, which is kind of where I want it, to be honest. Took out the monk. Took out the phoenix. The phoenix managed to like, kill itself, I don't know. That was odd. And yeah, he messes up there, he didn't log. And that's basically just game. If you're going to take that much damage. When it's like this sort of small chip game, you basically lost. Um, and he plays the ice spirit as well. So this was really smart. No phoenix, no ice spirit. So he has the poison if he wants to defend this. Or he has to try and do something with the gob gang, in which case we have a zap for it. So really, yeah, nice zap. That's a really, really good outplay. We can also defend the Phoenix easily. And he has the poison, but it's still taking pretty much tower. So it was a big mistake from him playing the Phoenix and Ice Spirit. Smart punishment from us, and he gives up. Well, he kind of doesn't. It was really weird, this guy. Well, I guess it's probably showing the wrong replay. But, like, yeah, he kind of does give up, but doesn't. Either way, we end up taking the tower. Or maybe we don't. I don't know what it's showing now. It's just making up the ending. Alright, well, that's just... Let me freak on him and it even shows it. Yeah, replay's a glitch, but... You get there, yeah, three crown, nice and easy. And again, this match was like similar, we just destroyed him. Completely obliterated. Uh, I think this was probably a really nice matchup, to be honest, but we did play well. We played smart, so we just go for a band up. And this was a really, really nice minor. Last second, kiting it behind the tower. Yeah. And that look, Max King Tower, that's like two and a half or one and a half thousand damage just from the first place. So we let this lock on, then we go for Queen. And yeah, just really, really smart, playing really, really well. We force out the Valk. But yeah, because I asked the Valk the Queen, and both wall breakers are going to connect. Or well, your Valk's that side, and the Queen's going to connect. So we force him to make a choice, but he doesn't actually have a choice, the other way we're getting a load of damage. And so we're playing really smart, and at this point there's basically no way we lose. We're just in a really good position. Completely dominating, to be honest, and yeah. That massive error, when we have bats, he has to defend with a phoenix. And then we can just bandit, the bandit knows what it wants, it's right on the mortar. Bandit knows, bandit knows. And yeah. Hmm. Again, what is that poison? It's just not even on my weak tower, it doesn't make much sense. And like in this situation, you know, we're just forcing out the log and getting mine chip. That's all we want. And if he has the Valk to defend the miner, that's like great, because he's Valking on our strong tower side. And so we barely even have to defend it. This was smart, go for a gob gang first to distract, then a bandit, and it still takes out the Valk as well. And then we're just getting the mining chip when he has nothing in hand to defend it, to be honest. I can see that hand, really, really awkward hand to defend miners. Unless he caught it with his own miner. So we'll go for a queen, and that's just about wrapped up. Yeah, we can tell it's given up, so just nice. Domination. Domination station, maybe that should be a new slogan. 
I can see all these players, all these sort of cycle decks that rely on ship damage are likely to outship or overwhelm. As you saw, we didn't single 18 for that. I mean, I thought 9 was stingy, 18 is also highly stingy. <laughs> what can you do? Okay, this game. Again, this deck, but I didn't want to show it because good player and some nice plays. I'll put a double just for now because it's like 5 a.m. And hmm, watching minor cycle gameplay, it's like watching paint dry sometimes. Anyway, we get the MK, and this is a really nice queen positioning onto the Phoenix. He's also used his Ice Spirit and Poison, so he has nothing for bats. And yeah. He can't defend this wall break because it's a really good outplay straight off the bat. And we can defend this. We actually mess up, so he does get some damage. We mess maybe we didn't mess up, we just didn't have enough elixir. But he took the damage lead slightly. And we know he's gonna um, try and ability, so a good MK to protect him. And because he has to defend it with bomb tower, plus other stuff. Let's go for that. Really good ice spirit log on his end, so nice defense. Again, this pushes it opposite lane, I actually really like that, because it's forcing out poison just on that. When he has no log in hand, we can go for minor plus. Go up gang, high bats, forcing out ice spirit, and then we just take out stuff. And those wall breakers, we just appreciate those wall breakers have brought the phoenix to the opposite lane, so we can freely queen, and if he wants to poison, it's gonna be in our strong tower. So really, really smart wall breakers there. And whilst we're down a bit of damage, here we're applying some dual lane, forcing out the log there so we can go all the cards. And minor getting a load of damage because he can't afford to defend it. So really smart when he doesn't have the log. And let's just put it to single for now. And in good queen ability, once again, it's basically for her tower, but we're forcing out the poison when he has no phoenix and no ice spirit. Defending well, getting an MK on this minor was also really nice because those spear goblins are taking that phoenix. And notice, yes, we do take a phoenix hit, so that was unfortunate. Um, the opposite lane, tower, has taken a load of damage just from those little chips we've been doing to force out Luxa. So that's really nice. And yeah, so we do the same thing with wall breaks as well, trying to force out a bomb tower or, or log plus ice spirit. So it works, we're still getting a load of damage, and then we can go in this lane, he has no log, he can't afford the bomb tower once he's monked, and it dies just before it gets loaded the ability. So we get banner on tower, a load of stuff. Really smart sap the goblins, not the tower, to take that out, get those bats on tower, and then, yeah, some really nice outplays. Just those little pockets of pressure opposite lane, important to note. Especially when he doesn't have good counters, so you're always forcing a poison or an overcommit. And then the final game, we were playing really well, to be honest. This was like half an hour ago, because I guess then the time of the games. And then now I'm recording it since the thing didn't record properly. The final game. So wall breakers connect. And I wanted to look at this. Yeah, this is what I want to look at. So when you're in an awkward spot, you have nothing really for the collect. It always mine at the front, plus spam stuff, so in both lanes. Because look how much damage we get. Mine at the front, they almost never predict, like you saw he missed it. And look at the damage, we've taken over half his tower on the right lane from what was like two goblins and a spear goblin or something. And then he goes for E-bombs and we have MK. So, yeah, that was just straight off the bat. Once again, really good domination. Force out the ghost and he won't have anything to defend the MK unless he goes for his phoenix. And he chooses to go for offensive phoenix and take the MK damage. But we know he's going to heal spirit, so we go for a gob gang. We're in his head. We are better. We are psychic. And look at the MK damage on the left now. You're seeing this deck a lot of dual lane damage. But we just want to force out the monk. Essentially, we're never letting him get these big pushes. We're always applying the right amount of pressure. And we're never letting him pump up without either forcing a lot of damage off his towers. Or we're forcing... Or we're just killing the pump. So he can never get the big advantage that they want with the frame deck. And we go for the wall breaker split, we get a connection on his weak side. And so now we want to cycle some cheap troops. He doesn't have long in hand, so we go for the goblin at the bridge. 
And so, he, yeah, he actually just can't defend it. He pumped at the wrong time, I guess. I didn't even realise. I thought maybe he was just bad. But looking at it now, he has no elixir. And we can also take out the pump. Like, that is what a perfect punishment, to be honest. There was nothing he could do. That was perfect timing. And um, we haven't let him get his 3M once. Good kite from the ball breakers. Plus on the ghost as well. Really good predictive kite. He hasn't even had the opportunity for one three M because he just been applying pressure. And yeah, he predicts the gob going. Doesn't work out. And that's game. So really, really nice final game. Just play smart. And you can see we keep going on win streaks. We're seventh now. So yeah, playing well. Feeling good. And I would say MK's back, but it's not. It's like the worst day it's been in for ages. Sixth. There you go. And I'll probably release this the day after the last video. Bless.